Welcome to the Money Down Locks with Cool King. He's yeah. With the yes, locks sir. for the week. Bring my cheese, King. <laughs> I got you. It's March Madness. It's been a lot of madness already. We see teams like Oakland, you know, upset Kentucky, who bust some people, brackets, whatever, and pause, whatever you want to cook. <laughs> 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 that is Madison. Okay, Wisconsin. I'm sorry. I hate no, to no say No Diddy is what they would say now, but. No Diddy. Diddy. What's the locks for the week, this Cam? For the yeah, Cam, okay. <laughs> It was out there. I don't know if y'all follow me on social media. I've been kind of hot lately. I've been kind of hot. At lately. Cool King. At Cool, at cool so, King. You want to make some money, you feel me? Follow Get me. in with well. <laughs> it. Lock in with Cool King Locks. So this weekend, we're on to the Sweet 16. Sweet 16. Uh, so I think it's going to be a repeat of last weekend. I think, for the most part, I think I like all the favorites. But I do like two upsets. Two upsets, you know, could possibly happen. I like Clemson over Arizona. I think they cover the spread. And look out for Gonzaga against Purdue. I think you know they play, you know the, I think they play a good team team basketball. They're gonna, you know, like game plan for Edie. If you could eliminate Edie, if you minimize him, you could beat Purdue. So I like hey, that. Purdue, Purdue one of them teams over the last several years, they've been getting knocked out in the first round. Mm-hmm. They've been doing all right this year so far, mm-hmm. but I I could definitely see them getting knocked off by Gonzaga. No, Gonzaga over the last few years, they've they've had a team where they potentially could have won the chip. Oh, Gonzaga's mm-hmm. nice, bro. Yeah, they they mm-hmm. always solid. And I, I like the Clemson pick too. They they knocked Baylor off this past weekend. Baylor was a tough team. I thought Baylor mm-hmm. was gonna win that matchup. It's gonna gonna be a fun one. I like I like UConn to win it all. I mean, they've been bro, solid, yeah. you know, all year Sorry. long. They won a chip last year, so it'd be cool to see. You know, a team went back to back. The last team to do that was Florida 06, 07. So it's been a while for history to repeat itself. Who y'all yeah. like to to take the chip this year in college basketball? You caused my, cause my pick to, to win it all. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, so, so just, you know, Ken, best friend, homie, talk to him all the time. Just from listening to him, he done kind of, you know, embedded <laughs> UConn to win the chip in my head. Bro. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm going to go with another, you know, uh, Tourney number one. Uh, I'm going to go with Houston, man. Yeah. I know uh, mm-hmm. Houston been hot pretty much, you know, the whole year. Obviously, up and downs. Um, This past game, they was at a dog fight. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, I just think they battle tested, right? You got to go through games like that where – Shit, dark man. You don't know. You don't know what's gonna be the outcome of you know of the, of that game. And they went through that this past week. So I'm just hoping that they learn from that. And then from here on out, they just cut use that to you know catapult them to the chip. They're gonna have some tough matchups. Um, but you know I got them in them in UConn in the, in the Nash, and uh, I got Houston H Town right with the H. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I got Tennessee, hey. bro. No, I hey. think ten- I, I like I like how Tennessee play, bro. They got some really good guards. They got some really good front court play, and I think they're gonna be a tough matchup for anybody coming out of their side, as we know. I think they're gonna get Houston some problems in the Final Four. I do think Houston makes the Final Four, but I think Tennessee smoke them, to be honest with you. And then I think it's gonna be like maybe a five point spread against UConn in the nag. That's that's just my that's my early prediction, and I think Tennessee beats them, bro. I think Tennessee's been like on the cusp. For the past, I don't know, maybe what, three, four years, yeah. two or three yeah. years. And they've always had really good teams, man. And I think this is the year that they go get it, bro. Yeah. Let's go. It's gonna be tough. What about the what about the women's side? Uh, there's a lot of star Ooh. power over there. We got hey. Hey. A, lot, a, lot of, a lot of big names. Hey. Yeah, that, they hooping out there. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody be in South Carolina though. Yeah, yeah. Nobody That's taking Cal- the value. You, think, mm. you don't think Caitlin Clark go out on top? And her I, final, her final mm. year, you think LSU try and hit a hit a repeat? Which y'all, which y'all you know, think? <laughs> I, I, you know, all of us are huge Caitlin Clark fans on this pod. Um, mm-hmm, big time, but you know, it, for yeah, big time. But you know, when you get into these games, right? Like when you start to face the LSU's, the South Carolinas, right? Like I, it's Stanford still. I don't, I don't like the Stanford. Yeah, like it's those teams that have. You know, that team camaraderie basketball where it's more than just one player and not saying that the guy, the, the women on Iowa aren't handling their own, you know, co-star with, you know, with Caitlin. But it's just a lot more team ball and a lot more things that have to go into it and going your way in your favor. So I, I, I personally don't see nobody beating South Carolina. I know there's a little beef between South Carolina and LSU, <laughs> LSU. head coach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm trying to see I want to see, I wanna see that. <laughs> I want to see it, yeah. Um, but that's the stuff that makes, that's the stuff that make you know, sports go, man. A little yeah. beefs in between, a little slick yeah. stuff being said. So I'm looking forward to it. The women been hooping. 
They been yeah, for sure. Good. Yeah, for sure. I, I, what y'all think about? Uh, I got to ask what y'all think about Caitlin Clark's comments talking about like people are more excited about the women and the men now. Though. It's it's, it's true. Yeah, it's I mean, true, I, I, feel, I feel where she's coming yeah, from. Yeah, but, 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 but before, nah, it's true, the, bro. before the season, but, I mean, at least for me, I couldn't name you like a you know a face of NCAA men's college basketball college like basketball, I could with the women. So I got Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese. You got all these Juju Watkins over there. I know I'm yeah, missing Juju. some of them, but they, they, yeah. they hooping over there. You see, like, mm-hmm. the talent in women's basketball is getting better and better. They're 100%. getting more attention. Like I said, you see them getting the NIL deals, and I hope it translates to, you know, the WNBA getting more attention and them getting higher salaries when it comes to that. But I think when Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and all these, you know, girls in college get to the WNBA – I said, I think they're gonna they're gonna bring some attention to it. I think there's already some firepower already in there, like Sabrina sure. Nescu and all these other talented women that are already playing. You know, Dari's sister Arike, who we gotta Arike, if you hear this, we gotta get you on here too. So yeah. come on, <laughs> you know come, on. come on, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some hoopers out there, man. But yeah. I, I like her comments. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have a problem with you. It. <laughs> you think, uh, and you know, I ain't taking nothing from the women. Obviously, they've been hitting the next level. You know, like they're bringing it, man. Like the girls in college right now are are, are balling, and I love to see it. Obviously, we all love watching it. But do you think at some point, women's college basketball becomes more exciting than men's college basketball? It, it, bro, to me, right now, it is. It is. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, bro, one hundred percent, and I think. I think even with like something that was so dope and cool to me is when you start seeing the big dogs in the NBA for sure start yeah, recognizing yeah, yeah. it. Like I, I remember uh Katie and Braun giving Juju Watkins a shout out. Like that's dope for her, right? And then obviously everything that Caitlin's been able to do this year, all the Nike can't like Nike done put out some raw campaigns yeah. for yeah. for Caitlin. And then sure. also too, like she how she's playing, bro, is insane. Like what we see Stephen Curry doing, she's doing that on the norm too in college yeah. basketball right now. Like she is shooting, she's shooting a three from the from logo. The logo from the like, logo, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and it's not, it's to the point where it's like it, like with, with Dame Litter, when he, when he shot that three, Paul George was like, That's a bad shot, and he made it. Dame does that consistently. Caitlin is doing that consistently, consistently and it's yeah. Is, and she's 100% confident. She's 100% confident that she can come down court and pull it in his green. So, you, so I, I just think that type of, you know, power right now with seeing how they're hooping, they're playing team basketball. If you watch, you know, women, everything they shoot look good. It looked like it's going in. They're fundamentally sound. I think that is what's appealing right now to, you know, the 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 fans eye and watching, you know, versus women in college and, and men's college basketball. So, you, so you're going to so, feel out uh, of you gonna fill out the NCAA women's bracket next year instead of the men's? I might do it anyway. I might do it for sure. Hey, but to add on to what So said too, it was, it was cool what they did with the All Star Weekend with Curry, the three point yeah. contest against. Yeah, hopefully we get Caitlin Clark on there next year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, a little. They okay. need to do Caitlin and Dame. And Sabrina and Curry, like a little, yeah, like a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll be playing contests. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fire. They need to go ahead and start playing and just make a Caitlin Clark like my team card, or you know, once you hit the league, <laughs> go 2K. <laughs> 2K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dope too. Yeah. Starting too far yeah. right now. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> say give her the 99 off rip because you know she's bullet. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, and I, love, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I love the confidence that the women are having. Like you see Angela Reese, she talking her shit. Like like Caitlin yeah. Clark, you got coaches saying we just got to win this first round so we can get to the next round and knock Caitlin Clark out. Like that's the that type yeah. of stuff, and also like the beef with you know the two coaches. That's what make college sports good. Exactly. It's, it's good. Exactly. It's good beef. You get it what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's good issues, and and we need that. And yeah. here it is. You have women. They going out there too. They on scholarship too. They yeah. they out there. They out there hooping. That's yeah. what we can yeah. see. <laughs> I was gonna say, and, 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 and we done all heard some like some crazy speeches in our lifetime in sports, and like they got juiced up. But when Angel Reese got on that mic, bro, I know it was a little bit ago, and she talked about we ain't scared of South Carolina. Boy. Like, oh, <laughs> anybody we play, anybody that's gonna see it should be scared. I'm like, yeah. that's, 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 that's what it's all about. Right there, what? That's what it's all about. And also, and I'm going to switch lanes a little bit. The NFL is looking to <laughs> flag people for the hip drop tackle. I know 
We got some defensive players in here, so I know y'all got some. I know y'all got some. I'm gonna let you talk, and I'm gonna go on my rant. (laughs) Yeah, I just, I just just think it's extremely tough, bro, and and I just don't, I don't think it's fair at all, man. And you got, you know, I, I kind of know, you know, that there is a lot of, you know, there is, um, you know, a huge risk in the way of tackling, and and we talked about it earlier, not too long ago, James. Like tackling isn't something that is as preached as much as it used to be but to me it's just tough because when you have a guy like Derrick Henry coming around the corner you look at somebody like Josh Norman for an example he's a meme forever and it's (laughs) at the time it was funny but it's like bro like all right like if it's you in that position this shit not funny (laughs) what you gonna do so it's a tough situation. I just think, you know, I'm I'm curious to see who's the first person to get fined and how much that fine amount is. Because, you you know, you come to your locker on, on, on Tuesday or Wednesday and that FedEx slip sitting there. Sitting right there. And you pop that thing and that thing say 15 bands. It's going to be a lot of upset people. They're going to make a lot of bread off, uh, you know, fines bro. from that tackle. Bro, you being nice, bro. The NFL tripping, bro. They making this stuff so like, bro, it's, it's turning into patty cake football, bro. And p- people may not like that I say that, but it is. I mean, you might as well be watching the. At some point, you might as well be watching the Pro Bowl, bro. Like, I don't think that you should, bro. That's like, imagine a guy taking a bad angle, taking a poor angle, or you know, a guy's too fast, you can't catch him, things like that. Like, how else are you gonna get him down? Like, you not, you can't hit people square up no more as much. You know, obviously, you got to be careful with your face mask and stuff like that these days. Having your head down you get hit with target and whatnot but you tackling a guy from the side and like you just said you got powerful runners like derrick henry i'm gonna throw isaiah pacheco in here and how hard he runs bro like you're not gonna arm tackle him you know what i'm saying you take a bad angle you're gonna have to do something or you're getting stiff armed you're getting ran through and so you're putting the defense at a disadvantage bro like i said it might as well be flag football bro. you know what i think people should do bro and it's a hot take bro because I'm, I'm being for real like you should have like and it ain't going to be every defense, but you should have some of the top defensive guys in the league that you know like to hit people, things like that, that fans love to come watch and see. And you get an angle on Derrick Henry and you know it's poor and you're not going to be able to tackle him, tag his hip and let him run in for the touchdown. Just let him go. You let a few people do that, they take that rule out because you're putting so many people at a disadvantage. And I know people ain't finna do that. Cause, but I mean, like, the thing is, like, yeah, cuss down. <laughs> you know, be cussed out. Hey, because, hey, but, here, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. You ain't finna get cut because you're the top. You're the, one of the best defensive players on the team, for one. And for two, you're gonna avoid that fine. I mean, it is what it is. Like, at some point, people are gonna be tired of losing money for BS rules that the NFL has put in play that is putting you at a disadvantage, right? Like, you think about, you know who's really affecting? It's affecting D-linemen, too. Because, like, now you can't lay on top of the quarterback. You know, you can't fall on the quarterback, like, just naturally. Like, how are you going to stop your momentum? We've been talking about that for a couple of years now. And then the second thing is, you got a quarterback like Josh Allen. Somebody's big. You got you get another quarterback in the league. Like, let's say, like, say, for example, another Cam Newton comes in the league. That's a powerful runner at the quarterback position. Like, what are you supposed to do when you got a quarterback that can shrug off tackles left and right in the pocket? Like, sometimes you got to drag them down. Right. So now that's two ways of D-Lam and can't tackle you. Now he can't land on top of you. And now he can't try to get you down by dragging you down. Cause I know D D Lama do that a lot whenever they're going off balance and stuff, but I'm off my rap, bro. But like the NFL is really taking <laughs> out. Hey. Cause Cam Cam was looking for smoke, man. Oh, he was looking for smoke. Yeah. Cam was looking for smoke. Like, what you gonna tell to the offense? Or what you gonna say to the offensive player? Now, now he started lowering his shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Things like, cause you don't call running backs as much, and you don't call running backs really at all. Whenever and they lower their helmets sometimes too. Like it happens, and you never call it. So I understand that it's exciting to see offensive players make big plays, bro. But for some of us, it's just as exciting to see a defensive player make a big hit, make a big stop on third and fourth down, things like that. You know, take down a Derrick. Henry. Some people get excited when somebody makes a tackle on Derrick Henry and don't get yeah. stiff on. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the NFL's got to figure it out. They've got to find a balance because the more they keep limiting the defense, the more it's going to turn into the, the Pro Bowl every week in and week out. Watch. Yeah. Totally. For me, do I think people should get fined? No. Do I think it should be a flag? Maybe. <laughs> but, <'cause it's> just gonna... <laughs> you got to run in that talk to y'all, yeah. boys. Yeah, he's yeah, he office guy. I've been, I've been hurt by that tackle. I've, I've gotten a high I ankle sprain. I've seen, obviously, guys get, you know, their ACLs torn, break their leg, however, maybe. Like, I know it's hard as hell as a defender, you know, to bring somebody down running full speed. Like, you running, you running this way, he's running this way. There's only a couple ways to bring him down. I just feel like 
don't know. It's got to be a different way for guys to bring somebody down. Like I said, I don't think guys should probably be penalized or fined for it. I just hate that damn tackle. We saw it last year. You saw at least about three, four guys yeah. get hurt on the same exact thing. And it's just tough because that could possibly end. And I know it's a tackle. People not doing it on purpose, but that not saying it's going to end somebody's career, but some people don't bounce back the same after stuff like that. So yeah. that's, that's just my, my viewpoint on it. I, I think it's tough. It's extremely hard to tackle. You can't hit by, hit nobody in the head. You can't do this. Can't horse collar. It's tough. You, I, just, you, I just, I just hate that tackle. I'm and just, you hate I'm to saying. see, and you hate to see guys hurt. And I don't want to yeah. say that because like, I want to see the guys stay healthy because it's a tough sport. You know, you put your body on the line. I want guys to be healthy, but think about this. Like, the DK Metcalf, you know, chased down on Buda Baker a couple years back, right? Like, we talked about that. Like, if I'm not mistaken, that was a hit drop tackle, too, and he yeah. saved the touchdown, right? And yeah. people wooed and odd yeah. about that. But what if Buda got hurt, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was the only way he was bringing him down, Yeah. first off. So, like, it's just things like that. Like, you got to think about all aspects of it. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, you never want somebody to get hurt. That's just that's, – that's a move – but that's a tackle in the play that that's really hard that you yeah. shouldn't have taken away. What, yeah. what kind of bothers me about this whole thing? And and I, James, I 100 percent agree, uh, you know, just from the injury standpoint and not wanting guys to get hurt. Um, but I just feel like there's other things in the NFL right now that could be prioritized yeah. way more like these damn turf fields. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you got guys tearing their ACL, popping their Achilles, all this that's type right. of stuff. Left and right foot because problems, yeah. foot problems because yeah. these turf fields aren't giving, and we're talking about a billion dollar company like billions. They the NFL week makes well well over more than a lot of these other you know leagues. I just feel like that like that stuff that should be taken care of as well. And then also too, I just think like where football is going now. Like I seen a stat earlier today. Um, I, I, that I seen that it said like the drop off between the scoring has gone down like maybe like five yeah, or six points. points. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And we know how it is. You know, we've been in you know NFL locker rooms. These teams are trying to score points. These owners want to see these high scoring games. So I just think any way that the NFL and that company can uh, you know <laughs> help the offense a little bit more and get you know because that's what attracts you know that's what yeah. attracts fans these these high scoring games. Any way that they can get, you know, a couple more dollars out of, you know, anybody, they going they going to exhaust it. So yeah, it's it's a hundred percent hard to play defense. I just I'll say this: I would much rather somebody hit me in my chest than the hip drop tackle me and roll on my ankle any day of the week, any day of the week. That's that's just how I say. It. But it's it's hard to play defense. I I'll say that. I'll say that. I couldn't I couldn't do it. <laughs> that's that's a wrap. <laughs>